Welcome to another building history video. This one's a bit different. I'm building an actual house made by a specific architect. In this case, the architect is Mayakawa Kunio, a Japanese architect. And this house was built in 1942 by him for his family. The house was originally built in Shinagawa Ward in Tokyo. The architect, Mayakawa, was the son of a civil engineer and from a samurai family. At this point, samurai's families were not the samurai of your blockbuster movie, but they were the social upper class. And Mayakawa definitely benefited from this. He was, however, a very bright student in his own right. He skipped over a year of middle school and sat the competitive Tokyo High School entrance exam a year early. After he finished his university education and he became a qualified architect, he went to France and refined his skills there. After he returned, he opened up his own architectural practice. This house was built, as I said before, in 1942, which means it was completed at a time when the world was at war, including Japan. And in Japan, this meant that building materials were scarce. You definitely weren't going to be building with metal. All the metal was requisitioned by the military. And you probably weren't going to be building in concrete either, since without metal, building in concrete can be tricky. And building in bricks is not really a great idea in Japan because of the high level of seismic activity, by which I mean there's lots of earthquakes. Uh, so this house was built using the very traditional Japanese material of wood. And... During the war, Mayakawa lived in this house with his wife and also his entire architectural practice. Well, that's where the office was. Only he lived there at night. And they did try and be conscientious towards Mayakawa's wife. However, uh, at this point, Mayakawa and his wife were basically living in their bedroom and the kitchen and that was all the personal space they had the rest of it was given over to the architectural practice because their old office had been destroyed uh, so this building if you look at it from the outside it has a very traditional Japanese style as I said before it's made of wood and there's lots of strong verticals there's also lots of small panes of glass in big windows that kind of are reminiscent of those Japanese paper screens, but also they make windows in the same way with glass. However, the inside is very much Western. Uh, if you go to Japan now, they have a, West, a Japanese style, Western style that's their own. They might think of it as Western style, but it's quite different from what you'd see in Europe, in America, in South Africa, in Australia. Whereas this is really a Western style of the 1940s. So what I'm building now is a modern interior, how I'd like it, but how it was originally built was very much in a Western Western style. So the obvious example for that is the bathroom. The original bathroom had a bath a toilet and a sink in one room that was tiled floor. In modern Japan, you would never find those three items in the same room. The toilet would be in its own room. The, sh the bath would be in its own room with a shower outside it. Um, and the sink would be in its own area as well. If you want to see what that looks like, uh, have a look at my Japanese modern build. So this is very much a Western style house. And I, I just wonder at the time what 
his wife thought of it and what the other people in his architectural practice thought of it uh, because this is very different from how most Japanese people were living at the time. So this house was actually dismantled completely in 1973 and put into storage. And you might be thinking, how can you put a house into storage? If you knock a house down, doesn't that destroy it? Because this house is entirely made of wood, you can actually take it apart kind of like, uh, like a, a, a doll house or a, a Lego house and you can pack all the pieces away. And this house was in storage from 1973 to 1996 when the family uh, donated it to the Edo Tokyo Open Air Architectural Museum. And that architectural museum is where I saw it. Uh, you can go there. It's in Tokyo. And I visited in December 2017. And there are lots of other buildings at the Edo Tokyo Open Air Architectural Museum. There's a lot of Edo period buildings, so old medieval feeling, although not strictly medieval, farmhouses, 1920s buildings, 1890s buildings, and this house. And when I first saw this house, my first impression was, oh, they've put a 1960s house in here. But this house is built in 1942 so often with design what you have to remember is what is cutting edge in 1940s has become by the 60s the vernacular so the cutting edge design is always going to be a bit ahead so when you think something looks typically a particular decade and it's in a museum or it's by a famous designer or in this case a famous architect, remember that it could be actually a lot earlier than you think it is. And these, these designs, it really just shows you how influential some of these people have been. So I was just blown away by this house. It was my favourite house in the museum and... I think it's probably my favourite house of all time, which is why I wanted to build it in The Sims and fill it with the furniture and the layout. Well, the same layout mostly, but the furniture and decoration that I would like to live in. Because if there is one house that I have seen in my whole life where I just walked up to this house and I thought, this is amazing. This is beautiful. And everywhere I went in this house, I thought, I, I want this. This is amazing. This is so well designed. This is so clever. This is so beautiful. Uh, except perhaps maybe the original 1940s kitchen. Uh, I think I'll pass on that. I put a modern kitchen in. <laughs> uh, yeah. And this house, I just want to emphasize again how radically different from a traditional Japanese house this is. So all these floors are hardwood, which if you go into a Japanese house that is a traditional house, they actually do have a lot of hardwood floors. So if you go into the hallways, they'll all be hardwood floors. But once you step into a living space, it'll have tatami flooring, which is those reed mats. And this house has no tatami rooms. This house has no Japanese style bath. This house has almost no concessions to the traditional ways of Japanese living, of reusing spaces, of uh, carefully thought out storage. In this house, everything is open. Everything is on show. Everything has a place and a purpose. And it's just a very very different feel from a modern Japanese house and a traditional Japanese house and when I saw it at the museum in Tokyo I just it was just really different from everything else that was there so this house that I've built is a bit different from the original um 
So the master bedroom is pretty much the same, although all the bedrooms in the original had sinks in them, which I found a bit strange. That's obviously seen as a Western thing, or they wouldn't have put it in, but that's obviously not a modern thing anymore. So that was fascinating. Um, so there was the master bedroom, and that had uh, radiators under the window. And then next to that was the bathroom, which didn't have a separate shower. I put in a separate shower. Then there was the kitchen laundry, which was smaller than the way I built it. Uh, I actually enlarged all the rooms, pretty much all the rooms, a bit. And in part, that's because in The Sims, things take up a slightly different amount of space to how they do in real life. And where in order for The Sims to be able to use something, you have to put it in two separate squares. In real life, you can stack things differently and move things around as you need them. So um, so there was the original kitchen, which was small by the standards of a modern kitchen. Not small by the standards of a modern Japanese kitchen. And then there was the main living area and the mezzanine study storage area where uh, Mayakawa kept a lot of his architectural drawings, which... If you've ever seen, these days it's all done on computers, of course, but traditionally architects draw on massive pieces of paper, which you then have to store. So that is obviously in Mayakawa's mind when he designed this house, space to store all those documents. And upstairs, there's actually a, a door into the roof space for even more storage. And then downstairs in the living room, there's a living dining area uh, with a beautiful lamp in in the above the dining table and then a little tv nook by the stairs because I made this more like a modern house I put a big tv on the wall where they just had a lounges without a tv um, but that's just because of the change in how we use spaces these days and the room that I've made kind of a study come spare bedroom was originally a spare bedroom and study combo and the room that I've made a child's bedroom was originally a maid's bedroom obviously that's not really a thing anymore <laughs> and next to that where I put a bookcase was the uh, entrance hall and the genkan which is the space in a Japanese house where you take off your shoes that was pretty much the only concession to traditional Japanese ways of doing things, is having that genkan. Um, otherwise, it was very, very Western. Um, so, yeah, I've really decorated this how I'd like to live in it, because this is my dream home version of this house, rather than the original version of this house. Uh, yeah, so it's a bit, I possibly toned down the 60s-ness of it a bit, made it quite a bit more today, up to date. Um, but I did try and give it a very similar feel and it does have a very similar layout. Obviously, the garden is quite different. There's not the things you need to build a Japanese garden quickly and easily it would require a lot more thought and in the museum the house doesn't have a huge garden so here's the outside shots um if you go on the wikipedia article for mayakawa kunio you'll see this house pictured there so then you can compare and contrast uh, i put a grand piano upstairs because this is my ideal house and my ideal house has a grand piano uh, in some of these room shots you'll be able to see my photos that I took when I visited this house. So this was the maid's room, which we couldn't get into. And this is the hallway and the genkan. This is the living room. And as I said, the original didn't have a TV here. Um, but it did have a dining table kind of over there. And here's the shot I took. You can see there's the there's the lamp and the over the dining table and the main living area. This is the master bedroom where I put a double bed and 
some things under the window. There's two single beds in the original which have been jammed up together. I suspect originally they were split. That's a very 1950s thing to do. This is the very modern kitchen and here is the 1950s kitchen, uh, which it, it needs some love. And here's the upstairs. Um, here's the floor plan. So the original didn't have that second bathroom at all. It just had sinks in every bedroom. And then upstairs. So that's all. Thanks for watching. Bye.